I am to start with confession. When I was proposed to have those introducing words to you, I, my first reaction was to reject. Why? I'm not an expert. Here you have the best expert, Mr. Bilevich, maybe some other experts, Dr. Tsava, maybe Dr. Spivak, other people. However, afterwards, I realized that when I am speaking to people, and I'm sometimes invited to speak to people, it could be 10 people, it could be 1,000 people. Usually when I speak, I try to be in touch at least with one person. <coughs> Being in touch through eyes. Because this is how I can understand how he reacts to my arguments. And therefore I decided that yes, it's my duty to come to you and to present you maybe a story of an ordinary man. In this case, really, I'm an ordinary man. Why? Because I'm not a man who was beaten up in a pogrom. There were people in Poland several times, very many times. I'm not a, a man who was fired in 68, like very of my friends were. My child was not persecuted in those days, was not mm, harassed, was not, mm, well, was not offended even, while sons of my neighbors were. And maybe after this I'll give this example, because it's a very significant example. So if you would ask me in general, did you, have you been affected by anti-Semitism? I would answer, if not the ghetto, if not Auschwitz. But this is ein Kapitel für sich. Well, a special chapter. If not this, maybe not so much. So I want you, when you'll be working tonight, today, and tomorrow, to have just an ordinary CV, from the, this point of view, of a person, how was he affected still, how he was affected with anti-Semitism. And I decided just to, not to make a lecture, only to report you, to make a report, just to summarize how year by year, stage by stage, it affected a man who was born as Moshe Turbovich and who is now Marian Turski, and how it happened. I was, I grew up in the second largest city of Poland, in Łódź, where there was also the second largest Jewish community. Mm. The first, what I could remember, was encountering anti-Semitism. It was when I was 11 and I started attending the high school, and there's also a Hebrew sky school, a Hebrew sky high school. Those who visited would you know that it used to be Magistraska seed, now it is Kaminskiego not far from the, uh, uh, from the uh, court and from the opera. I was living at the street Sterlinga, where is the hospital, Sterlinga Hospital. So there were only two blocks from my home to the high school. But on the way, there was a cell 
of so called in Polish Młodzież Wszechpolska. They were the right, extreme right, anti Semites, and really, and because we had, as all the kids in Poland attending school, and emblems, emblems with the number of our school, they knew that we are going to the Jewish school. So they were hidden in a gate, behind a gate, with sticks, and whenever they noticed a boy or a girl from this Jewish school, they tried to beat us. Of course, we had to find an auto defense, a self defense. So after a time, we tried, we decided that we will go with a group, all knows of the sticks, and it really, it helped us. However, if I am to, to remember the first mm, phenomenon of anti-Semitism, it would be this one. A second one would be, and this is connected also with be, in, be, before the war in, in Poland, there were very few indoor swimming pools. The only, the unique swimming pool in which was in the YMCA, owned by YMCA. And they did not permit the Jewish students to attend the swimming pool. So I remember it was really very unpleasant and very uncomfortable because winter time we had to take a tram, a streetcar to Zgerz. Those who know would know that it is some 20, 22 kilometers away from the town, go there to the swimming pool. It was, for, for, young, for, for youngsters, it was very uncomfortable, but still, this is the second what I can remember from those days. Third one. It didn't, it didn't touch me because I was not yet before uh, ready to the we call it, the Germans know, matura, to, the, uh, to, to, to graduate uh, the, the, the high school, the first step of the high school, the first stage of the high school. But I was in the second class of the high school, so I didn't have to think about it. But I knew that some of my elder friends, schoolmates, who graduated, who got the matura, and then they were looking around where to go abroad to study. Well, we spoke today with uh, Zygmunt Stempinski, the director of, of Pauline, that some people uh, maybe uh, envy them. Well, they will go to France, they will go to Czech, or Czechoslovakia, they will go to Austria, they will go to another uh, uh, state, country to study. But they were compelled doing it because there was a time in the late 30s in Poland when there was introduced numerous Nullus, which means no Jew would be admitted to, well, let's say, to law or to medicine. Then it was something, another, <coughs> another reservation, numerous clauses. Yes, they could be admitted to some mm, areas, but only in the same proportion as they are in Poland. If in Poland the Jews are uh, consists 10% of the population, not more than 10% of the students could be accepted if they were Jewish. And the third form of this discrimination was we 
we call it in Poland, we ghetto of COVID. It means a desk ghetto, a school desk ghetto. It means that, yes, you are accepted, but you cannot sit together with Christians, with Aryans. You, all, the, all the Jewish students, they would be isolated, they would be separated. This is only one part of the auditorium, of the hall, where they could sit down if they are permitted, because very often it was also, yes, you can attend a lesson, uh, attend a lecture, only standing. So you see, and this is what, of course, I heard. So if I try to remember from my boyhood what was really where I encountered the Semitic, it was this. Of course, there was something behind you. For instance, if you wanted to read papers and you took a paper of the so-called Nardova Endetia, or even not fully Nardova Endetia, but anti-Semitic. You would see, and but uh, just recently, well, a year ago was in, in our Jewish Historical Institute, an exhibition showing the cartoons, anti-Semitic cartoons produced in Poland in the 30s, and of course, if you are an intelligent student, you cannot avoid it. Then, I remember at least two great events from my boyhood, which were very affecting us, impressing and shocking. One, it was a pogrom in 36 in Przytyk, and everybody spoke about it. Everybody, because only two people were killed. Only two Jews were killed, only. But it was something, a warning, a caution, be cautious. It could happen. First, second, it was in 38 when the Polish Jews who lived in Germany were expelled from Germany, and after being expelled from Germany, they were really waiting what be their fate in a little town, Zbonszynek. Zbonszynek from those days, this is in Poland, but Zbonszynek from those days is a symbol of something dangerous of something when you don't know what would be your fate. And matter of fact, afterwards, of course, they, because they couldn't go, go back to Germany, they lived in Poland only one year till the, till the war. But Bolshevik was really a real danger. Now, it starts the war. Oh, yes. I was told not to speak long because it's 25 minutes. <laughs> then start the war. It starts, I am not speaking about the, what, what, uh, what did order the Germans. Because of course, from the beginning, it was first, you cannot enter the first uh, car of the streetcar. In the beginning, afterwards, you cannot attend at all a streetcar. Then there are some places, some streets, you cannot go through them. Then it was the armband, then it was the, go, the, 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 Star, the Star of David um, badge. But this is not so much deep in my memory. Then one episode, we were, I was in a queue to purchase, to buy bread, the bakery, 
and some Polish boys started uh, crying, screaming, oh, he is here, let him go out from the queue. And I, and I was kicked out from the line. So this, this day I returned home without any bread. So this is maybe a very small episode, but still, this is still in my mind. Let's jump over the ghetto and the Auschwitz, because this is, everybody knows what it is. However, in Auschwitz happened something to me, which I want to present you. Uh, because some of my best friends considered to be anti-Semitic, I don't share their opinion. What was it? I was for a time in a sub-commando of Auschwitz um, in a unit which had to clean up an oil refinery. Those who live in Poland, in Czechowice and Dziedzicach. And this was the only possibility and the only moment when I, when we were able to mix up with civilians, with Polish civilians who were just working there, employed there. And because I was in a group of 10 young people, because I belonged to the clandestine, to a clandestine, some people say clandestine organization in the ghetto. We were together, 10 people who were in the underground movement in the ghetto, and we formed like a group, a collective, and we decided those who are from, you, is here anybody from, from America? Nobody? <coughs> okay. Because if there will be somebody from America, he would know the name, because with me, second and also next number to my number, was Professor Lucian Dobroszewski, who, till, his, till, till he passed away, was a famous, uh, well-known professor at uh, Yeshiva in New York, uh, City University in New York. And he then make acquaintance with a boy in our age, a Polish boy, Janek, from, well, we started speaking. Of course, it was not so easy because we had to, 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 to pretend that we are working because there was also the German guard. And we told him, we are a group of 10 young people. We would like to join the underground. Here, uh, it's po here it is possible only here to escape, because if you provide us with civilian dresses, th this is possible that we can disappear, and then if you, of course, accept us on the other side, then we would like to go to do everything what, do, what the underground would decide. He was very exalted, he was very happy. And he told us, I have some, I am in touch with some people. Afterwards, we found out that he was also in the underground, in the Polish underground. And then he told us, okay, I'll let you know. Past one week, past two weeks, three weeks. After three weeks, we noticed Yannick is trying not to meet us. When he sees us, he goes away. He goes to another place, just not to encounter us. And then we say to Yannick, what happened? 
Then he confessed. Listen, my boss was a lieutenant from the Army of Krajowo, from the Home Army, from the Polish underground. Doesn't want to accept it. And then, this is also interesting to know, also for you, the majority of my mates, of my friends, in my group, in my collective, they considered it to be anti-Semitic. I didn't share the opinion. Maybe the lieutenant didn't like Jews, maybe. But if I were him, I would make the same decision. Because, and this is what I try to argue to my colleagues, to my comrades. Listen, if he takes us, he has to find at least 10 shelters, or maybe more, where we could come to life, uh, where we, they would take, uh, they will have to wait till we have still our hair. It was weird. It was everything raised. Then we are not officers, we are not skilled. They don't have enough weapon. Why to give to young people who do, are not trained weapon? Because they also lack weapon on the poor side. So probably from his point of view, it was a too great effort and even too dangerous because to hide 10 escapees from, from Auschwitz, it would be very dangerous. So I could understand, but listen, my, more, more, my friends, my mates, most of them consider this as anti-Semitic behavior. I don't agree, I didn't agree with them. Okay, but it's only one episode. Now you have, we are, the war is over, I decided going back to Poland in spite of a proposal of a fellowship either in America or in Canada or, or in, in, in Great Britain. Mm. And here is the first problem. Did you already visit the museum or not yet? No. And will you? If you will visit the museum, you will see in the post-war gallery, is the post-war, after 45, that still murders were going on against Jews in this society. We are sometimes discussing, was it 1,200 or was it 2,000? Historians are not sure. But Jews, if they were caught by the anti-communist underground, they were sh murdered, they were shot down, like it was the pogrom in Kelsey, but the pogrom in Kelsey is well known. But very many people don't know that if you were traveling, they would check you, and if you were Jewish, they would kill you on the, on the spot. And I was told, listen, if you want to stay in Poland, if you want to be active in Poland, you have to change your papers. Because my name is a good Polish name, Turbowicz, was. But it was, my name was Moshe, son of Elia of Elia. This is for everybody a hint that he is Jewish. So if you want to be safe, you have to obtain new documents, fake documents. This is how I has become Marian Turski instead of Moshe Turbovic. Well, of course it was my decision, my, I accepted it. However, if you ask me 
when I was affected with the symptoms, this is this. Then, of course, I don't want to, to simplify. In those days, it was a civil war in Poland. It was a civil war of the majority of the nation against the minority who wanted, who wanted to introduce a new regime, a new uh, way of, of life. Of course, uh, under his influence and after with the protection of Moscow, with, uh, with the Red Army. Well, of course, I can understand. And this is also why very often I am to tell it, anti-Semitism was a facade to anti-communism. Because for the great majority of this population, being a Jew, it was being communist. Being a Jew, it, me it meant being pro-Soviet. From this point of view, maybe if some of them, if they killed the Jew, they had in mind, I am killing my enemy. Why it happened? I will have to give you a lecture but we, I don't have time for it. In a few words, this is true that the new socialist, communist mm, government establishment, which came with the Soviet Union, with the Red Army, started with a declaration of equal right to Jews. It means before the war, if you wanted to become an officer, you had to convert. If you wanted to be, to be nominated as a professor at the university, particularly in the late 30s, you had to convert. If you wanted to become an officer, a clerk, a higher clerk with a higher position, you had to convert. And for the first time, it was obvious that now we would have the same rights, the same, the same possibilities, the same abilities to live, to develop, to function in society. This is also why the great, absolutely the great majority of the Jewish uh, uh, population, of the population of the survivors, only 10% out of three and uh, half million, only 300 survived, 300,000 survived in Poland, 250,000. But they accepted the new regime, on the whole. Therefore, this is here you see sometimes, now I'm going to Five more minutes. Five minutes more. So you see, this is why also the new regime wanted to legitimize itself. How to legitimize? How to seduce the great majority which was against him? To find a common enemy. The common enemy could be Soviet, but of course, the new regime wouldn't be against the new the Soviet uh, regime. But against the Germans, okay. Against the Jews, okay. So you see, this was a common denominator how this new regime could use anti Semitic slogans, ideology, ideolo ideology in order to involve, to argue, and to embrace a good anti-Semitic majority. It is not by, if you would have a chance, there was a famous poem of Czesław Miłosz, Yes, o eneru dziedzicem partia. The party is the hair of the radical, anti-Semitic party of ONR. And this is true. What would be afterwards, Stempinski uh, spoke about 68, 
And I think because my time is out, so I hope that when you will work in your workshops, you will have a man, just a young boy who was Moshe Trubovic, after with Mark Antusky, how he was affected by anti-Semitism. Thank you, dear.